Hey guys, how you doing? Ron's a nut here. Well, I'm going to be installing a Hyper 212 Evo CPU cooler on a i7-3730K processor. So I'll be using the uh, 1155 mounting for this cooler. But uh, I thought I would show you um, everything that comes in the box and what I'm going to need to install it on this motherboard. So. Uh, Here's a quick install guide on how to install a Hyper 212 Evo CPU cooler on a 1155 LGA chip. So inside the box you get instructions. There's also another set in multiple languages. You get a fan. This fan is a, uh, a PWM controlled fan. It's a four pin fan, which is nice. This is, looks like one of them sickle flow style design. Fans. It's a 120 by 120 by 25 millimeter fan. It comes with uh, a set of brackets on here already so that you can clip it right onto the tower. It actually comes in the box mounted. And then um, one thing to note is they've already they installed the brackets using four screws and some anti-vibration mounts. Um, those are rubber pads so when it touches the uh, cooling tower it doesn't vibrate and sound, put a lot of sound out. Um, we have here the cooling tower itself, four heat pipe design with a protective label on the bottom, the copper portion that touches your chip. And then over here, the uh, some of the key mounting pieces. This is your base plate that you mount to the underside of your motherboard. The uh, bracket that will, once your mounting plate is mounted, this bracket sits through the CPU tower and holds it down to your motherboard. The four standoffs and nuts that uh, you will use to secure the mounting plate to your motherboard and they also provide you a tool basically it lets you use a Phillips head screwdriver to act as a wrench to tighten down the standoffs so they are the perfect mount for the uh, for the standoff right there and you also get here if you wanted to add a second fan to the tower you get a set of another set of brackets you get four screws for screwing the bracket uh, to the fan and then there's actually four pads, four more rubber uh, anti-vibration pads that you would use to cover up those screws when you uh, um, put it against the tower. And then you also get a set of standoffs if you're going to be using this cooler on a uh, LGA 2011 socket, but we're not, so I won't be using that. You also get some Cooler Master thermal paste, which is great, um, but I won't be using that. I'll be using MX4. So this stuff I won't be using in my install and I will be replacing that fan with a different fan. So uh, let's get down to it. Let's get the brackets mounted to the motherboard and uh, get it installed. All right, in order to install the support bracket for the cooler onto the motherboard, you need the support bracket itself. You need the four standoffs um, that are for the 1155 or 1366, 1156 set up it's the only other set of standoffs they have in your in your uh, box aside from the LGA 2011 four nuts that go with it and if you're going to use the uh, tool they provide here for securing the nuts in the standoff that and a Phillips head screwdriver okay in order to install the uh, bracket what we're going to need to do first is put a couple of standoffs through the motherboard and then flip the motherboard over so that we can then line up this bracket so I'm going to attempt to do that now and hopefully you can see. Alright, so what I've got here is one, okay, I've got two. So this allows me to get my bracket uh, started. Now the instructions tell you which set of um, which portion of the uh, bracket to use on your motherboard. In this case, for 1155 or 1156, you use the center one. You could adjust it on the outer or the inner, depending on your processor, um, but that is the one that I need to use. So I, I have to install a couple more here. There's four of them. Right now, I'm just going to get these started and on the uh, to hold the plate in place. So right now, we're just getting them on finger tight. OK. 
Okay, now I can... the next one through. All right, so I have all four finger tight on to the, uh, the standoffs. Now what I'm gonna do is put the, using the tool they gave you, I'm gonna put it across and using, again, finger tight, I'm holding on the other side, I'm holding down the head of the standoff on the other side of the motherboard. And I'm just using my fingers right now in a star pattern, I'm going across. Uh, so far I've only done it using finger tight. Now I'm going to go back and uh, again on either side I'm holding down this standoff that I'm tightening up. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit tighter with the uh, screwdriver now. Okay, we have the support bracket installed and the standoffs are all through. Okay, now it's time to put uh, some thermal compound on the, uh, on the CPU and then we're going to mount the tower and secure it with the support bracket. So uh, that CPU I've, I've touched. I don't know if you can see on it, it's got some uh, fingerprints on there and so I have some uh, Arctic Clean that I'm going to use to clean it off and purify this guy here. So this is a thermal material interface remover. You can probably just use just um, real pure uh, isopropyl alcohol but like 99% pure stuff. So I'm just cleaning this guy off good. And then there's some uh, thermal surface purifier that I will use on it as well to get it really, really clean. All right. Nice and clean. Now, the way this, and then you got to be careful when you're on, this thing is a heavy chunk of metal. Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of wielding it pretty fast around here, but it's going to mount just like this. Now you can see that this does clear the heat sinks on this motherboard just fine. So it's going to be mounted like that. And then this bracket will go through here and be secured down into the standoffs there. So one of the things that you would want to do is read the instructions and make sure you have the right positioning of these thumb screws when you put it in there. I mean, you can probably adjust it once you have it on there. But in order for this to be done pretty quickly, I'm going to get it set right now. They should be right in the middle. So there's three slots that you can um, slide your um, thumb screw, your screws here to. And I'm adjusting them so they're in the middle for this processor type for the, so that they match the, uh, the settings right here. They should be in the middle. And they do line up just fine. All right, I'm going to squeeze it in a little bit. I have my MX4. That's what I'm going to use on here. And I prefer to do the line method. If I can get the cap off. All right. We have thermal compound applied. Now I'm going to peel off the uh, 
plastic and get my bracket line through and there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little tiny um, hole right in the middle of this block and I'm going to put it so it's laying inside there. Now I'm actually going to spread out the, uh, the bracket so it lines up really, really well with my, right over top of my standoff. So hopefully you can see this okay. All right, I have now placed the uh, CPU block on top of the uh, CPU. And I've started using my fingers right now. To I started screwing one of them in. Now I'm going to go across and screw in the, uh, the one right across from it. They, they suggest that you do this in a star method. And so that's exactly what I'm doing. All right, so I've got these two started. Now I'm going to go and secure again in a star method. And if you're not sure what that means, star method just simply means to do it in a crisscross pattern. You tighten now this one, then that one, then this one, then that one. And you just keep doing it. You just keep going across and start. Don't tighten any one particular side down too much or you're going to potentially have problems. I'm trying to do about 10 turns per So if I try to keep them even, equal. And actually uh, what will happen is I think they, it will bottom out. It will stop when it hits the, uh, far as it can go. Yep. Okay. Now one thing you want to check when you uh, finally get it all secured down there, there's a little pin and I don't know if you can see it, um, but there is a little pin located right on one side of the block of where this mounting bracket gets mounted to. You want to make sure that um, if you put the bracket in the right way, that pin will kind of will be on the very edge and, and, and secure it. It will actually keep it in position. So you will have two, two holes on either side of this center screw and then one on, one on a diagonal. So I don't know if you can see it up close in there, but there's a little pin right on that side. And if you install this um, bracket incorrectly, that pin will be underneath and you'll see it be kind of like on an angle. So obviously I've done that before. So I just wanted to point that out that uh, this is the proper mounting orientation of this bracket inside there. It's not on any angle. And you screw them down like I showed you in a cross crisscross pattern until, until it won't go anymore, until it stops. So we have the uh, cooler installed. Next thing we're going to do is mount the fan to it. But before we do that, I'm going to put a different fan on it. Well, I am lucky enough uh, from our friends over at uh, Performance PCs and uh, Frozen CPU that they sent me some of these awesome uh, noise blocker E-loop fans. And I'm going to put a B12P fan on this, on this uh, tower. So that's what you're going to get here and actually in order to do that I need to remove this fan so actually you know what I don't actually I will use the fan mounts pieces that they sent to add a second fan. So uh, let's do that.
And this fan actually has some uh, anti-vibration properties to it itself already. It has some rubber in the corners there, which is cool. But I still will use the little pieces that they provide as well. Now this fan is definitely quieter and uh, the other sickle flow I think is up to like 36 dB. This one is rated for 28 um, but I've run some tests on it and they are pretty quiet and this one does have some really good static pressure so that's what we're going with. All I need to do now is get the uh, extension cable to go from this to the motherboard. Alright so now we're going to install the fan but one thing we need is this four pin piece here and we're going on to the CPU fan connector on this motherboard which is for a PWM fan put some cables down underneath here and clip on the fan the way it's designed to be All right. Here we have a fan mounted on to the Hyper 212 Evo. So that's it. That's how you install a uh, Hyper 212 Evo on an LGA socket uh, 1155 chipset. <clears throat> I hope you uh, liked this video. If you did, like and favorite and if you're so inclined please subscribe and if you're interested to see how this uh, motherboard uh, overclocks well I'll put a link up and uh, come and join the uh, build log for this system and uh, thanks for watching that's it from Runs a Nut